The amount of cool projects and creativity that you have with VRChat's basic camera function is unbelievable. This feature is so powerful that VR films and music videos are a new way to bring out of this world ideas to a reality. So how do we actually access VRChat's camera? Let's go learn how. Once you have your VRChat up and running, you can navigate to your menu and click the little camera icon. You'll find a few different categories here. So if your layout's a bit different, that might be because you're on desktop mode. Regardless, I'll be covering everything that's also on desktop. I'll be teaching you everything you need to know. First, let's take a look at the photo camera. By selecting on the photo camera, it will open up a phone that you can move around which acts as your camera. The first feature here is taking a photo. And if you click it, ta-da, it does just that. It takes a photo wherever your camera is pointed. And you can hold the camera by clicking the trigger, usually on your right or left hand, to pick up the phone. If you're wanting to find any of the photos you took, you can find them by going back to that main camera menu and selecting Open Photos folder. This will open a file explorer window on your PC so that you can locate your photos. Next, we have the timed photo. You'll have five seconds to capture your image. This one is a good one if you're trying to take a big group photo and <laughs> need to get into frame yourself. So make sure to get all your friends in the frame before that timer goes off. Hopefully you only have to do it once or twice, not 300 times. We've all had that one friend who just can't get their pose right the first time around. The next one you'll see is camera mode. This one allows you to switch between multiple camera modes without having to go back to that main menu we went to earlier. We'll talk more in depth about the other camera modes a little later. Let's Let's take a look at the flying feature. This one's a bit tricky to get the hang of. If you've ever flown a drone, maybe it's something like that. I've actually never flown a drone, so I have no idea if it's anything like that. Turning on flying mode allows you to pilot the camera around. This can lead to some pretty cool shots, but definitely works better if you have people with you dedicated to using the camera. It can be tricky to act in a film and control this at the same time. Trust me, I've tried. Moving forward, we have the anchor feature. This is probably one of the more confusing features, but once you get the hang of it, it's super useful. There are three modes in the anchor view. The first mode is default, which puts your camera back into your hands and allows the frame to be viewed directly where the phone is looking. Side note, to flip your camera towards you, select this little flip button with the arrows here and select it again to flip it back. If you ever lose your camera in the abyss, default mode is typically something that will bring it back to you and reset it. Next is local. This lets the camera follow you, but you don't have to hold it and manually control it. It's a good anchor to use when you want the camera to stay on you without needing to be always holding it yourself. And the third mode is world, which drops your camera exactly where you're standing in the world. You can still grab your camera and move it around, but it'll keep it anchored to that spot. Let's talk about behavior. Speaking of behavior, if you're still watching this video, I think that means you should give it a thumbs up because based on your behavior, you must like it. Behavior has four options in VR. Smooth, look at me, auto level, and trigger takes photos. Smooth creates a smoother camera experience. This is a great feature and removes any shakiness you might have while holding the camera. Yeah, my hand's pretty much always shaking when I'm holding the camera, so this one's a lifesaver for me. Look at me tends to keep the camera on you, creating this effect where it looks like you're doing fancy camera work even when you're not. This could be a cool one for cool music video shots. Auto level will level out the camera to be even wherever it is. This is helpful when you need to use the anchor feature and anchor the camera to the world but can't get it to stay even. No matter where you move the camera, it will auto level out. Trigger takes photos will allow you to take photos by clicking the trigger on your controller. Next is focus, one of my favorite features. There are a few options here you can toggle between. There is off which of course turns off the focus, full auto, which allows the camera to decide what is in and out of focus. However, there's still a circle here that you can click and use to set the focus. Semi-auto, which will now add the aperture in addition, which basically allows you to control how blurry the background is. You can also grab this line here at any time to get a wider angle or to zoom in. Next is manual, which then adds focal distance, which is another setting you can play with. Mess with each of these to get a look that feels right for you. We can also use pin cameras. You get up to three pin cameras in VR chat. These are used to save certain locations or angles you can see through the lens. You can set each camera up however you want and then flip between each of these to get that fresh angle. Now let's take a look at mask. Mask has many different options, local user, remote user, environment, green screen, and UI. Local user allows you to block the camera's view of yourself so that you're no longer in frame. Remote user blocks other users around you and lets you be seen. Environment allows you to turn off your environment and create a transparent background. Green screen is a great one to use if you want to maintain that world lighting, but have your avatar be on a separate green screen that you can cut in post editing at a later time. And UI will turn off UI from being seen on camera. UI are pieces like other players' usernames. 
lens visibility. There will be a time when you need to see your camera and other times when you need to get it out of the shot. You can completely turn off seeing your camera, turn it to ghost mode, which makes it transparent, ooh, or makes it solid if more visibility is needed. Filters are a fun way to have extra effects. There are many here you can play with. My favorite is sparkle because it has that extra sparkle, making your scene look even more cutesy and anime aesthetic than it already is. And of course, we have photo resolution. You have several options here, and the higher quality you go with, the more strain you may put on your PC. I recommend looking into these different resolutions when you're able to, to learn even more in-depth knowledge about cameras if you don't already understand this concept. The last two are lock and grid. Lock allows you to lock your camera in place, and grid will add a grid to the frame, which can be very popular for photographers if they want to make sure the subject lands in these different frames. Now let's go back to the camera modes. You'll have local photo, multi-layer, and stream. Local photo will be your photo camera. That's the one we just went over. And multi-layer, which will take several photos at once. And lastly, we have stream, which allows the footage to be viewed exactly how you're seeing it on your VRChat phone. This is what I used at the beginning of the video, and this is commonly used when doing live streams and for recording any kind of video. Back in the main menu area, you can find the camera modes and steady cam, which is similar to the smooth function. The camera in VR chat is incredible and allows for so much creativity. If you enjoyed this in-depth tutorial and want to learn more VR chat skills, you should try making your own custom avatar next. That's what I did with this character here. Go check out the super quick and easy tutorial for making your own custom VR chat model.